Hello and welcome to another discussion series for General Chemistry 2. For this discussion series, we will be talking about chemical kinetics and equilibrium. So for us to discuss chemical kinetics and uh, equilibrium, we have to talk about energy. We all know that energy is the capacity to do work. Whenever you throw a ball, ride a bike, or read a newspaper, you use energy to do work. So there are two types of energy. We have the potential energy, which is the stored energy, and the kinetic energy, which is the energy of motion. A ball at the top of a hill or the water in a reservoir behind a dam are examples of potential energy. When the ball rolls down the hill or the water flows over the dam, the stored potential energy is converted to the kinetic energy of motion. Although energy can be converted from one form to another, one rule, such as the law of conservation of energy, governs the process. Remember that the law of conservation of energy states that the total energy in a system does not change. Thus, energy cannot be created nor destroyed. Now, chemical bonds also store potential energy. Actually, a compound with lower potential energy is more stable than a compound with higher potential energy. That's why reactions that form products having lower potential energy than the reactants are favored. In terms of the units of energy, energy can be measured using two different units, which are calories and joules, where, uh, wherein a calorie is the amount of energy needed to raise the temperature of one gram of water by one degree Celsius, and joules and calories are related in the following way. So remember that a joule is another unit of energy and they are related as to one calorie is equal to 4.184 joules. So since both the calorie and the joule are small units of measurement, more often energies in reactions are reported with kilocalories and kilojoules. So to convert a quantity from one unit of measurement to another, we have to set up conversion factors and use the methods I first showed you during our general chemistry 1 class. Now, for the energy changes in reaction, when molecules come together and react, bonds are broken in the reactants and new bonds are formed in the products. For example, 58 kilocalories of energy is needed to break the chlorine-fluorine bond in the mole of chlorine molecules or Cl2. In contrast, when the chlorine-chlorine bond is formed, 58 kilocalories of energy is released. The amount of energy needed to break a bond is the same amount that is released when the bond is formed. Always remember, bond breaking will always require an input of energy while bond formation will always release energy. In terms of the bond dissociation energy, we have here delta H, which is the energy absorbed or released in the reaction. It is called the heat of reaction or the enthalpy change. Now, the heat of reaction is given a positive or negative sign depending on whether energy is absorbed or released. When energy is absorbed, the reaction is said to be endothermic and delta H is positive. While when energy is released, the reaction is said to be exothermic and delta H is negative. Thus, delta H in here, in our example, delta H is equal to positive 58 kilocalories per mole for cleaving the chlorine-fluorine bond and the reaction is endothermic. And on the other hand, we have here uh, the formation of chlorine-chlorine bond which is equivalent to negative 58 kilocalories per mole for forming the chlorine-chlorine bond and that reaction is exothermic. So the heat of reaction is reported as the number of kilocalories per mole. So how do these uh, bond dissociation energy values help us? The bond dissociation energy is the delta H for breaking a covalent bond by equally dividing the electrons between the two atoms. We must remember that bond dissociation energies are positive values because bond breaking is endothermic. While um, bond formation is always bond, while bond formation always has negative values because bond formation is 
exothermic, like our example here. So what do this bond uh, dissociation energy tell us? It tells us about the bond strength. Because the stronger the bond, the higher its bond dissociation energy. Bond dissociation energies exhibit periodic trends, much like atomic radius and uh, electronegativity, value, electronegativity like we, we, we talk about in our previous discussions. In comparing bonds formed from elements in the same group, bond dissociation energy generally decreases going down the column. In the series, in our example here, in the series of hydrogen fluoride, hydrogen fluoride, hydrogen bromide, and hydrogen iodide, hydrogen is bonded to the first four elements of group 7A, which are the halogens. If we follow the trend, the bond dissociation energies of these compounds decreases down the column from hydrogen fluoride down to hydrogen iodide. If that is the case, hydrogen iodide has the weakest of these four bonds because the, vi the valence electrons used by iodine to form the hydrogen iod iodine bond are farther from the nucleus than the valence electrons in bromine, chlorine, or fluorine. Similarly, hydrogen fluoride has the strongest of these four bonds because the valence electrons in fluorine are closer to, to the nucleus than those in chlorine, bromine, or iodine. So most reactions involve breaking and forming more than one bond. In these instances, the heat of reaction measures the difference between the energy needed to break bonds in the reactants and the energy released from the bonds formed in the products. In other words, delta H indicates the relative strength of the bonds broken and formed in a reaction. So when delta H is negative, more energy is released in forming bonds than is needed to break the bonds. And the bonds formed in the products are stronger than the bonds broken in the reactants. For example, here we have methane, which burns in the presence of oxygen to form carbon dioxide and water. So in here, delta H is 213 kilocalories per mole of energy in the form of heat. That is why we have negative 213. In this reaction, energy is released. That's why delta H is negative. And the reaction is exothermic. So the bonds form are stronger than the bonds broken since more energy is released in forming the bonds in carbon dioxide and water than is absorbed in breaking the bonds in methane and oxygen. Since energy is released, the products are lower in energy than the reactants. Whereas, when delta H is positive, more energy is needed to break bonds than is released in the formation of new bonds. So the bonds broken in the reactants are stronger than the bonds formed in the products. For example, here, in the process of photosynthesis, green plants use chlorophyll to convert carbon dioxide and water to glucose, and oxygen and 678 kilocalories of energy is absorbed. In this reaction, energy is absorbed, that's why delta H is positive, and the reaction is endothermic. So the bonds broken are stronger than the bonds formed since more energy is needed to break the bonds in carbon dioxide and water than is released in forming the bonds in glucose and oxygen. Since energy is absorbed, the products are higher in energy than the reactants. So here is a table that summarizes the characteristics of energy changes in reaction. And that's the end of our first video in this discussion series. Thank you for listening.